there, Zelda here, and we are back on Hourglass SMP episode four, I believe. This is getting uh, actually kind of hard to keep track of. My, my mind is not that well equipped uh, to count, apparently. But guys, in between episodes, I have been streaming on twitch.tv slash shortzelda22, and I have something to show you guys. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't time lapse it um, because Replay Mod still quite isn't ready for 117 full release. Um, so uh, I think by maybe next episode, maybe next episode, we should have a actual real time lapse for you guys. Um, but let me show you guys behind me on the ground is a custom terraformed uh, bit of a bit of work, I say. Bit of work. Uh, this represents many, many hours of work. <laughs> um, and what it is, is it is based on a swamp mana um, art card from Magic the Gathering. So obviously this whole season, this whole season of Hourglass is inspired by magic. So I'm going to say it multiple, multiple times. Y'all are going to get sick of hearing it multiple, multiple times, but bear with me because um, I want to make sure that anybody that's new to the channel or to the server understands what we're going for. So Magic the Gathering in the Plane of Kaladesh, there's a swamp card. And I will leave um, the information about the artist. I apologize. I should have looked it up before I hit my record button. But it is such a cool um, version of a swamp. So I liked it that it was like um, the, the shapes of it. And of course, spirals in Minecraft are hard. These are very organic shapes. But I think it came across very well. Now you'll see a couple different things that we had to factor into our mana fields. That's what we are calling this project. Um, is this great big build behind me is Project Bone Meal. So some of you guys might have remembered seeing it in the last episode um, where I kind of flew by. Let's see. This looks like, I think this is Bert's. Um, ouch, that hurt. Uh, yeah, this this must be his lookout. This, this thing has gone crazy this last week. So um, slight spoilers, he does stream. Um, I'll drop a link in the description for Vert's uh, stream channel too, so you can watch as he's building this up live. Um, and I think that's his copper field. That's a lot of copper <laughs> that's going to go into this build. Um, but basically with his project bone meal here, he wanted to have a lake in front and then kind of a moat around this edge and then have it go into a deep pool over there. And I think they're going to um, be some waterfalls and custom terrain up here and like a walkway what? possibly over to the um, apartments. Um, and so I, this is all still a little bit rough over here, but it's kind of um, starting to come together. So that's why there might look like there's like a hole in the field is because this is intentional. It's intentional. I didn't just skip a spot. You know, just like, you know, turn turn the camera away. No one will notice the, the bits you miss. Um, but basically, it's going to be uh, like a, a pond here, a deeper lake there with waterfalls and a moat in between. And then in the art card, um, there's a tower here that another member of the server was interested in building. So I hope I hope I left him enough space. Um, otherwise, we can obviously all of the spirals that come into there, we can shorten up, um, tighten up a bit. So then the next thing that I'm going to work on, the reason why I brought you guys in where I did is because the next project I'm going to work on is these cliffs along here. I'm going to custom terraform them. You can see I kind of started an idea over here. So it's going to be an undercut. So it's like they, they overhang a bunch um, and I might be able to sneak in. There's like a natural cave there. I might be able to sneak in some cool something there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but basically, I'm going to do the cliffs here, and then we had an area up here that was um, originally river terra river biome that we had um, like torn down so that we could we have a, a squid farm under there. But as you can see, I'm starting another spiral there. I'm going to try to um, do a little bit more spiral fields up there, so just so that it doesn't look like it kind of just comes up there and just ends. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of felt like it ended abruptly. And then over here, um, let's keep the high ground for a little bit. Over here, we're just going to like tr uh, transition it off and do more of the cliffs on this side too. The cliffs obviously here are going to be a lot smaller um, because this goes up. This, this method that I have for making these spirals 
is basically uh, three, four blocks deep. So we've got jack-o'-lanterns, and then we've got honey, and then we've got glass that sits on top. Um, so we have lots of levels to this thing to give it some depth. Um, and then it just absolutely glows at night. So let me get up in the air and show you guys this. So like, yeah, the sun is setting now, but the fields are super bright and lit up. It actually made it really hard for me while I was working because I never knew when it was night. And like when I was like uh, working in this big spiral, this side still wasn't finished. And so I had like mobs spawning over there. Uh, it was a little scary. This is this is not gonna lie. Zelda doesn't like mobs. Um, so let me go ahead and I'm gonna work on some of this terraforming here, the cliffs, and then this backside here. And while I'm doing that, I have another kind of um, menial task that I recorded myself doing when I wasn't feeling so great the other day. Um, I wanted to get on, I wanted to play, but I didn't want, like, I wasn't feeling creative. I wasn't feeling inspired. Um, so I just got on and did something very, very redundant. So let me play that footage for you now while I work on the cliffs and the next spiral field, and then I will bring you back for hopefully a completed terraforming project. So uh, catch you on the other side. Okay, and I'm here with a little bit of a side project. I just uh, have about an hour of time to play the game and I don't want to get deep into a build. Now you'll see my friends around me, the bedrock up above, and then that obsidian behind us. Uh, we had someone on the server who found like um, whatever the perfect configuration is for trapping a wither in the... the uh, bedrock so you can cheese them a bunch of times. I did test it once already to make sure that I was capable to handle this endeavor uh, but I will be doing this for probably the next hour and uh, my friends here should hopefully they, they get stuck they have problems pathfinding so um, like this guy just stood here and stared at the first one he just stared him down you just stare at him, didn't you? You just stared. <laughs> uh, so occasionally I'll, I'll probably re replenish the golems too because I brought a bunch of golem making uh, accoutrement. So I will time lapse this, roll it, and uh, we can kill some uh, withers cheese, the cheese style together.
and welcome back from probably what was an ill-advised time lapse. I don't know uh, how that's going to come across. Being in the nether, uh, I didn't think to light the area up until after about the first 10 or 15 kills um, when I realized, hey, it's kind of dark in here. Um, so then there might be some flashing lights and then I set myself on fire because all I had to light the area up was fire. So we'll see how that turns out. But look at the progress, guys. I've got the top part of this field done. Um, this is, if you remember uh, from, you know, all of like five minutes ago, that part was completely flat. Um, so now we have this area that's done. I'm going to borrow Vert's uh, landing spot again. Um, and then I stopped here because I'm at the level of the actual terraforming over there. Um, and so what we're going to do here is I've already visited with Vault and he and I are going to work on like a transition area here um, for how the sand is going to meet the uh, swamp fields, the mana fields. Um, and the reason why we have to take some special considerations in is because down here we actually have a couple underground farms. Um, now, most of the farms I've been trying to have built above ground, like I've, I've intentionally, like I want the farms easily accessible, um, but because of the way I did this terraforming, we ended up, we, we just covered up the squid farm, um, and Corgis is actually in the process of modifying it anyway, so that we have a uh, glow squid farm and then a regular squid farm. Um, so that we can get both types of drops. I'm not sure how far into the process she is, but we're basically, we're trying to do both, both types, but separate now. Uh, whereas before we just had one that was doing both. And then also Oren tucked in a extra, like, um, a wool farm for additional types of wools because we're running some maps now. How do I get out of here? <laughs> Uh, we're running uh, some map art, and map art takes a heck ton of wool. So we need to keep in mind the consideration for how to smoothly blend that type of terraforming and this type of terraforming, um, and also make access down to the farm. So there's probably going to be a build here um, that helps kind of ease the transition. So Vault and I are going to work on this at some point um, soon, hopefully soon. And then the next piece that I left off showing you guys, and of course, I don't know if it's picking up in the recording, but my dog uh, just ran into the room. So she starts barking or whining, I apologize. Um, but down here, I had pointed out that I was gonna work on the cliffs also. Now, I brought back the recording because I think I have an idea. I think this is what we're gonna go with for our custom cliff terraforming. So we've got a mix on the bottom of mossy cobble and tough, and then regular basalt with the end texture sticking out, and then smooth basalt, and then the dripstone, and then like this mix of sand. Now, a couple things. This mix of sand actually comes from this side over here where it's wrapping um, from the river. So there's a bunch of the sand in the, so there's the smooth sand stone, which now I can't, there. There's smooth sandstone, sandstone, and sand. So it's kind of wrapping as like the top layer that's going to go all the way around. And then what I'm imagining is kind of like the fields here, because remember, it's meant to be a swampy area. So the swamp is kind of, there's like moisture coming up from the ground and like hardening and like uh, changing the composition of the sand. So it's eroding away what was the sand cliff here originally. And where it's reaching this level is it's hardened the sand, but then down here in this lower level, it's completely eroded that side away. And that's why the stone shows. Um, and then the reason for the darker texture is to create like a shadow. So as you're looking at it as a whole, it should kind of pop out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish out these cliffs and then I'm going to um, visit with Vault about how we are going to do the transition from the sandstone over here into the fields right here and kind of what this looks like for this area so um i should be back with y'all very soon oh, as i fall off the build that that was totally intentional i swear i i just wanted to be back down here again totally didn't let go of my shift at all nope mm -mm. <laughs> we'll be right back
and we're back hello i have a progress update you can kind of see over my head here as we turn around the fields are now now 100 percent done 100 percent done uh, i kept thinking i would be done so basically when i did the um up part here I thought I was done but then I was like nah how do you blend it so I was like I'll I'll fill the space more um with a little bit more spirals and then I brought it up to the same level as the um sand around here and I was like okay well that kind of works and then Vault and I had a conversation and he's like is there a way you can you know blend the two together and I was like oh we can try so what I did was I had just the final spiral it's the final spiral um <laughs> we have one last spiral and then what we have is what we're calling tendrils so the mana fields go out into the tendrils and now over there you can see we brought the cliffs um that I'm gonna get down and show in just a minute I just realized, I, I realized I'm talking about this out of sequence. The last cut I had, um, I left Toph talking about the cliffs. GG Zelda, GG, good, good video cohesive uh, editing. But that is what they look like. And because of how they turned out on these lower fields, everybody asked me to, uh, and by everybody, I mean like three people on the server said, hey, you could do them there too. <laughs> so we did them there also. So let's get down and let me show you guys what the they look like from down here Ta-da! it looks so cool I'm really happy with how it turned out and video cohesion aside I also forgot the pointy dripstones up there so uh, I, I guess we're, we're like 95% done we've got one more type of build to put up there and then we're done uh, but you can see on the bottom level we kept that tough and mossy cobble going all the way around and then the next level up, we have basalt and smooth basalt with a couple of the deep slate ores that look oh so nice, oh so beautiful. And then on the dripstone level, chat recommended that we add some pointy dripstone. And I think it adds a nice uh, texture variation because both the like the lower darker level and the top light level both had some texture variations that was missing at the basalt level so it really helped kind of I don't know give just a little bit of variety for that um what is it called that strata of the of the levels um and then the sandstone up top that wraps around beautifully to the other side of that cliff and then on this side let me see if I can show you um, it wraps beautifully up into the um, texture of the ground up here. So I think it all worked out really well. So now when I look this way, you can see that, that those missing pointy dripstones, it does. It looks just a touch flat. So I would like to say a big, huge thank you to my shout, shout out, thank you, whatever. I can't talk today, apparently, um, to chat for making recommendations. Y'all always have my back and help enhance the build. I appreciate it. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to show you guys over here is we moved this stall was originally slated right there, which felt a little funny because like a big build like the iron farm should have like a, you know, a pretty big path up into it. So we'll probably clear out some of these cactus and make the path go all the way up into the iron farm. But what we did was we moved this over and you can kind of see this is the sneaky way down into these farms. So, um, I know I, I'm like 90% sure I showed this part, um, is that the fields are, aren't only decorative. They're technically functional. They are hiding. Um, the fields are not hiding. They are the build, uh, covering three farms. We've got the excess sheep farm, the wool farm that's producing stuff for our map art. Then we've got a regular squid farm. And now occasionally our axolotls do uh, take up residence along the side. So that's why um, Corgis has put in this trapdoor. I think all you have to do, if I'm understanding correctly, is just go through and nudge them out of the waterway. Um, which she has more patience than I do. Um, also, that is not working for me. <laughs> Maybe I misunderstood what the little bit I know of how this farm is functional. But basically they're... I don't know. They just like to hang out here because of the water streams. But it is it is still producing. It is still cranking out. So we've got the regular squid farm here. And then over here, we've got the glow squid farm. Which... <laughs> 
we're gonna have to figure this out because I don't know why they do this. Oh, I hope they don't squish themselves being all up in there. So that's interesting. Okay, I wonder if this one's producing more because axolotls are spawning in the dark and so we have more axolotls in the tank. It looks like we have more axolotls in that tank. These guys are, y'all y'all be tr chilling. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm so easily distracted. Every time I start recording, every time I flip the record switch. I did it in the last episode with um, Project Bone Meal. I had to edit some of it out because I, I sat there and I talked about it for like 10 minutes, not knowing what I was talking about. Just ooh and ah and what is this? This is cool. <laughs> oh, this is why Zelda never gets anything done. <laughs> is uh, I'm spending so much time just looking around at the server. So what we did was we, um, we like, feathered, quote, feathered. Uh, we only got a little bit of feathering in, but we feathered in that terrain to this ter- Oh, okay. I'm not a griefer, I promise. I'm not griefing, I promise. I'm not griefing, I promise. So we're at the final spiral here and it's perfectly fitting to call this the final spiral because after today, um, as of today actually, of recording this, I, it is August 1st and we are on to our first mana island of the season. So for just a quick refresher, because I know I've been talking for a long time already, uh, the whole premise of Hourglass SMP is that we have a limited time on this server. We have six months to execute our builds, and month one was only to do farms and uh, base camp where we're at now. Our farming industry area and everything you see around us. This was just month one. So we are going to come back around and help polish. Obviously, there's still little projects to do in the meantime. Um, like we have the whole bazaar up here and several like just temporary builds marked out if we can get to them or if we need a break um, when we're working. But let me show you guys where we're working at currently or going to start working. And then on the next video, I think I have one more um, section planned for spawn camp base camp that I just couldn't quite fit into this one. Um, so the episode after next, you guys will see a lot of work out here. Um, and like the nether might change too. We're, we're, revi we're, uh, reviewing plans for paths too. So let's take a look at this. This is, okay. So remember as of recording, this is exactly one day into this project already. One day, one day into this project. And these crazy people on the server with me are so amazing. They are all very excited. Everybody's taken on kind of different projects. Um, but like already it's it's meant to be a mushroom by mushroom island. And you can tell that uh, some, some of the uh, more grinder players have come and started converting to grass. But each one of these markings, uh, and like in the different colors of wool, let's see if I can land, can I land, can I land? Nope, nope, nope. Um, so these are minor spoilers, but this is, this is the first peek at what this island will become. This is our white mana. It's meant to be the plains. And I will definitely explore more of these uh, markings as we progress through the month. But so far, this is what we got. And I got pants behind me who's probably wondering what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you off here with just a teaser for for island number one. Oh my gosh, you guys. Like, I am grinning ear to ear on this thing. I am so freaking excited uh, to get this started. We, we're rolling right from Kaladesh into Dominaria and the island of white mana with order and morality and a you know, big, big thing there, big thing there, village back there, something over there with the yellow wool, something here with the green wool, all the purple spikes. What are those? What are those? You'll have to come back and find out later. I don't want to spoil.